All right, guys, I'm going to show you how to make this main menu style for your virtual classroom. And the best thing about it is if you want to do the Bitmoji classroom, you can. And if you don't want to, you don't have to. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in a little bit just to show you the different buttons, explain them just a tiny bit, and then I'll walk you through how to make it yourself. So I teach English, and um, this is my little Bitmoji that I put on here. The first row of buttons, I have a daily agenda. And if the kids click on this image, it would redirect them to my Bitmoji classroom that I created yesterday. Um, this is very simple, um, basic, haven't really done much with it yet. There are tons of tutorials all over YouTube. If you want to do this and you're not sure how, it's actually quite simple. So look up one of those other tutorials. They are so, so simple, so easy to follow. The second thing that I have is notes. Anytime that my kids are going to need to take notes in their journal or if they need to download them, whatever it is, it'll be right here. Google Classroom will direct them to the Google Classroom that they are sharing with me. I teach 7th, 8th, and college-bound seniors, so I don't have this link set up quite yet for each of those classes. Missing work is the next one. So if kids click on this, it'll open a Google Doc right here. And in that Google Doc will be all the missing work so that they can kind Google. of, oops, Google's talking to me, um, so that they can kind of keep track of their own learning and uh, not rely so heavily on me for something like that. This is class text where they can click on this. It'll open a Google Doc. Um, it'll have poetry, short stories for reading a novel. That's a PDF that'll be in there. Easy access at any time. This one is uh, to request one on one meeting with me. If they click on this, it's going to redirect them to a Google form, which was so easy to make. I only put three questions in here. What's the title of the assignment? what question or section are you having uh, trouble with and what exactly is it that is confusing so i can look at this before i set up that one-on-one -on -one with them and better help them this right here is targets so for my middle schoolers i always set up targets um, basically i look at the standards and we have them do rubrics or scales where they they grade themselves it's something that's required for our district so this first page Take some step one, step two, step three. I provided the pictures for them so they know exactly what they're doing. Um, hopefully that'll prevent them from asking a million questions through emails. Then they go into the targets or the standards where they you know, cite several pieces of textual evidence. So here's the actual standard, but this is what they're gonna read. I can find textual evidence that supports my ideas. And then using the PDF highlighter, they're gonna highlight whichever one they fall underneath. They're gonna rate themselves and I'm gonna be able to check that out. They're gonna rate themselves several times a year. Um, if you're interested in this, you like to have your kids rate themselves, this is in my Teachers Pay Teachers store that could help you out. Um, this next button is a contact info. So if they were to click on my Bitmoji here, it would redirect them to this slide and this slide has the Remind app, my email, my classroom phone, my office hours. Um, I would encourage you guys to put a disclaimer like this, allowing 24 to 48 hours for responses. So that way parents um, understand, you know, we usually we have quite a load of students. So it's nice to put a disclaimer like that in there. This button, if they click on it, it'll send them right to Zoom, right where they're gonna be having uh, our meetings with me. And this last one, if they click on it, it'll open up the syllabus that we're going to create. So pretty straightforward. Um, when you guys make your own, you can obviously change these buttons to best fit your kids in your class. So with that being said, I'm going to show you guys how to do this. So first thing you want to do is open up a new tab. And you're going to type in slides.new. And that automatically sends you to a brand new Google slide presentation. And this is gonna load up. So the first thing that I always do is get rid of all the extra stuff. So I'm gonna get rid of the themes. I'm gonna get rid of anything that's already on the slide just to make things easier to work with. So get rid of themes, click out of that. Then I'm gonna highlight these, get rid of those. <clears throat> 
All right, so now we have a blank Google slide. The next step is to go and resize this slide so it's the size of a piece of paper. So we go to File, scroll down a little bit, Page Setup, okay? Click on this, go down to Custom. We're gonna customize this so that way it is exactly the size of a piece of paper. I do 8.5 by 11 inches. Apply it and you can see it looks like a piece of paper now. Then I go up here and I rename my document. That way it's nice and saved. Good. So here we have it set up. The next step, we need to put our background in. So I really like rustic stuff. So I right clicked, go to change background, and then choose image. Go to Google image search and I typed in gray rustic wood. And it's gonna come up with so much stuff. So let's just click the first one, insert that, hit done. And then it loads up, there's our background. This is much darker than the one that I chose on my example, but there it is. The best part, it doesn't move because it's now your background. So you don't have to worry about it moving all over the place. Now we want to put in the little buttons and the header. So I didn't explain that. I'm going to insert a shape, go to shapes, and then I click the rounded rectangle. That's just what I like. Um, oops. You can click whatever you want. There's so many different shapes. So you click it and then you drag and position it. So because my background's so dark, I'm gonna keep this one white, but to change the inside color, you go to your paintbrush and you can pick whatever color you want, fit your personality. I'm gonna make it straight white. I'm gonna have my border color be a dark gray and then kind of thicken those lines up a little bit on the outside. So there's our header. Now we wanna put words in the header. So we're gonna insert a text box, pull that right in there. So say you teach English like me, type the words in, come on up here, figure out how you're going to resize it, how big you want it, whatever font you desire. It's totally up to you. So English, if you want to do like a text box that's not straight sideways, you can put a second text box in English with, and we'll make this a little bigger so you guys can see. And if you want to like tilt it, you grab hold of this little round button here and you tilt it. You can move that around like that. I didn't change the font, so sorry people who love pretty fonts. That's going to stick. Now, if you haven't already, you need to download the Bitmoji Google Chrome extension. If you haven't done that yet, just pause this, go download it. Once you download it, you're going to see this green icon. You can click on it and it's going to connect to your Bitmoji. Um, if you have Snapchat, sometimes it connects to Snapchat and tells you all the different Bitmojis that you can look up. You can click down here for specific topics, whatever you want. We're going to click this one, me with my coffee. Right click it, copy image. Come over here, control V, which is paste. It's your best friend. We're just going to move that up here. So pretty straightforward. Obviously, it's not pretty, but there's that. Now to get the buttons. To get the buttons, it's a lot like your header. You're gonna insert a shape. I use another rectangle and you just insert a smaller rectangle. Change the color however you want, it doesn't matter. Insert a text box, put that text box in there. I made my first one, the daily agenda, right? Put that in there. However, we need to learn how to put a picture in. So to find a picture, there's kind of like a shortcut, a sneak peek way to do it. What we're gonna do is go to Google and I want you to type in clipboard. Okay, so you'll hit clipboard, it's gonna load. You wanna make sure that you're in images. You're not on the World Wide Web, but you're actually just looking at pictures. This is what's gonna come up for clipboards. The problem with these is that their background is white. So if you're putting this picture on say this gray background, you're gonna be able to see the white and it's not gonna look like a crisp clipboard. So what you need is a transparent background. That's really difficult to find, but 
If you go here to Tools, once you're in Images, you have to be in Images first. Then you go to Tools, then sneak over here to Color and go to Transparent. It's going to reload, and now you're going to have all the clipboards that actually have a transparent background, okay? Things like this. Boom. We could click on it. All right, say that's what we want. Actually, that one's kind of cut off. Let's say this is the one we want. You can see the squares in the background is transparent. Right-click it, save image as. It's going to load, hopefully. And then you can save it to your computer. Boom. Awesome. Now we're ready to go back to our slide insert an image we're going to upload from computer then you're going to choose the one that you want resize it to whatever you want it to be pop that puppy right on your button beautiful okay now the trick with these is you want this to be linked to another page so you're going to come right here and there's a link button that says insert link. So for your daily agenda, if you have a Bitmoji classroom that you're going to link, say you're going to put your daily agenda on here. So you want your kids, when they click that button to come to this screen, you'll go to wherever you want it to go and you're going to highlight that URL and you're going to copy it. Then you'll go back here to your picture, click on it. Come on up to this insert link, click on it, and then paste that link right in there and say apply. Okay, now that is linked to your Google Classroom. So when your kids go to click on it, it will send them directly to that classroom. Okay, it's pretty straightforward. You just repeat that process over and over until you have all of your buttons that look like this. And yeah. If you guys have any questions, just let me know and I will try my best to answer them. All right, guys. Thank you.